Um, and the next board meeting, um, because the Greenway uh, does abide by the open meeting laws, uh, um, and we are, are interested in what the public has to say for the use and the planning of the Greenway, uh, the next public uh, board meeting is on July 20th, uh, excuse me, July 16th, which is a Tuesday at 5.30 p.m., and it, uh, those meetings are held at the Atlantic War. So, and anyone is welcome to come to that. Um, I was asked to talk about some of the concerns and priorities of the Greenway. And uh, I, I think the events really speak to what those concerns and priorities are, which is horticulture, um, uh, events, programming that uh, is uh, interesting to everyone, not only locals, but uh, drawing visitors from all over the state of Massachusetts. These are funds that the entire state pays for. It's the, it's the DRT funds. Um, so we want to uh, attract everyone from Massachusetts and internationally. Um, the Greenway has a mission to be a, a world-class park. Um, it, and uh, by having these programming events and public art, they're hoping to attract visitors from everywhere. Um, the horticultural concerns. Um, they are an organic park, uh, and that's very important to them, so that animals are, are safe, children are safe, people are safe in using the park. Um, so they're very pleased with they do their own composting. I don't know if anyone knows that, but they do their own composting and use the compost, which is all organic. Um, they do have a five-year uh, strategic plan for the public art, um, which includes sculptures, uh, time-based art, uh, performance art, um, winter lights is uh, uh, something that's coming up right now. They're, they're going to uh, finalize their uh, bid on the winter <coughs> lights project. Um, last year, it was only a few days in the in the season that they had the winter lights. And we're not talking about the disco balls or the, the light of the pergola. We're talking about events that um, use lighting as part of the, the art project um, that's coming up. They are uh, changing over the Dewey Square mural. That's what <laughs> um, I don't know who the, the finalists are yet for that, but that will be changing. It is a rotating um, piece of art. Um, you would not be alone in, in wanting that uh, to change over. Um, and uh, the, the newest uh, urban nursery uh, between North and Commercial Streets, which is currently a, a, an unused lot, um, they're hoping to start all the plants there um, for the Greenway. Um, that's still in the planning stages. I'm glad you're there, Robin, but I got something to complain about. Three years now I've been looking at that stupid picket fence that was temporary between Commercial Street and North Street. I'm, I'm asking you to go back to the Greenway and the Transportation Department to see if they would build or put a vinyl covering over that. We would install it. The Commercial Street Abutters Association would put it up. If they supply the the uh, vinyl stuff like they did at St. Leonard's, or put a scene there, that I know that was only temporary because they want to get out of the area. But the mitigation has never happened. They haven't covered it. Okay. Either they take it down or they put up the, the standard highway railings to protect people from jumping over. Okay. Yeah, Nate. Yeah. Um, Nate has some Yeah, I'm actually working on a project <coughs> with the Greenway and Artists for Humanities and. August, the end of August, we're going to be covering that fence with vinyl, painted vinyl, and with, uh, with the high school kids from our school. I've been banging heads to get for a long time now. I'm so sick of looking at it. Wait, wait. So that's in the works. It's ugly. It's yes. ugly. But well, I've got assistance if you need help. Right. Thank you. I will still um, pass along your concerns to that, so thank you. Um, the next item is the so, um, two questions. Thank you. And number one, for presenting. Um, the parcel A that we took back, there's three and three, like three holes. They didn't be put back. 
Um, if you're walking from the Salem Street extension through mm -hmm. Fast Lake, um, and it rises up going toward the yes. market, mm -hmm. was two, there was three trees, and they're gone. But the tree, whole, like the soil remains, but it went over the yeah, yeah. There's I was curious if those trees were put back. I will ask them. I know their goal is to increase the number of trees. They decrease. They do. Yeah. Okay. Um, they were at least two. Yeah. I, I don't know why. I'll, I will have to ask. It's them. not just on the Salem Street side, on either side of Hanover Street. There were yeah. two trees removed from the Greenway on both sides. They actually it's moved those trees. Um, they're still in the parks, but they moved them to the, the big beds that are between um, Hanover Street and the park. They're the, they have the green views and Arbor Whitey, Globe Arbor Whitey. So I'll see three trees in there. They're flowering right now, but, but they are supposed to add more trees. Yeah, but yeah the good thing about those trees is they the shade. The same spots that you said there wasn't enough shade. And um, I just wanted to, when the fountain was going on? Yeah. Oh, uh, uh, did you what's say the, the, no, I didn't, uh, Memorial Day. Mm -hmm. That is my question. It's about the rain fountain. Yeah, they. Uh, if you saw it, was they dismantled it for a while to uh, maintain it and clean it. Um, uh, it's a proprietary system, so um, they, you know, very specific to the shape and the location. Uh, so they had to go in and, and maintain it and replace a few of the uh, the spigots that that shoot the water up. Um, but they've completed that, and it, uh, they do plan on opening it for more than Great. Well, thank you for all the information. Um, one big concern I have on the Greenway Parks is the stakeholders. Mm -hmm. They are destroying, they mean destroying the environment. Mm -hmm. not, not only that, but um, there have been incidents of, of assaults. Yes. Well, I complain to some of them, and some of them moan. So, I thought, 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 I Thank you. Um, uh, That's good. They'll jump over the rail. 
<laughs> you know what I'm talking about? More or less in four because it's always going to, they're always going to come no matter how many yeah, dogs are they're going to go there. Yeah. And uh, any kind of enforcement, there's not even signs of that I can, uh, can remember. Uh, uh, if there are, there's too few. Well, no, no one gets to enforce it. It's, 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 it's the Friends of Christopher Columbus Park has had uh, a couple of meetings on, on the same issues. And there are, there, there, unfortunately, the standard city sign, if you see it, and they've just put some new ones up at Christopher Columbus Park, focuses on like how bad dog waste is, which you really don't need a sign for, but rather than keep the dog on the leash, the, the keep the dog on the leash is tiny, tiny little letters, and as a result, I think, of, of the fact that it's so downplayed, there are a lot of people who think that the, the Christopher Columbus Park is actually a dog park, and you're supposed to bring your dog and off-leash them. And the dog control officer came to the last FOCC, there was two FOCCP meetings ago, basically said that he has no authority to stop people, ID them, and give them fines, uh, which it makes you question why we have a dog control officer, a department with 15 officers and a director if they can't do anything, but that seems to be sort of a fact at this point. So, you know, what I was told by the, the powerless dog control officer is to call 911. They love the water, by the way, so that's why they'll have a new dosing Yeah. Yeah. Um, I, I, I think. I, and again, I will mention this, and I, that is something that I know is a, is a concern to the, the Greenway Board. Um, another problem that's a citywide problem that the other parks um, have this problem as well. But I think, but I think uh, maybe you could reach out to to Roth, the the neighborhood committee, uh, the the group um, to promote responsible dog ownership because that's I think where it really starts with the people controlling their dogs. But I, I again will mention this. Um, Ruff was a rough representative was at the parks meeting on Tuesday night and, and he was just as overburdened and you know so we, we can, we're, we're doing all we can you know um, and I was just wondering there's a lot of talk now about this question of enforcement and and using uh, a different approach to cameras uh, in the city um, and I'm you know and, and, and maybe taking the leaf from the UK and other places and I'm just wondering if the Greenway has thought about developing a camera strategy where they could actually, instead of having to pay the dog <coughs> control officer who can't do anything anyway, uh, to have some camera uh, footage. And so skateboarders can be identified and they can be fined. I, I have not been uh, involved in any discussions about cameras on the Greenway, but I can certainly bring that up. Because it's clearly something that's coming in the city generally. Yes, I know. Again, there was a request at uh, the FCCP meeting um, or discussion about cameras in that park as well. So, for other reasons, yeah. Well, one, one, one sort of homegrown solution we did because we didn't seem to get any satisfaction from anyone is we have a, a we created a, a website, dogs.focp.org, that you can post pictures of. You know, whatever you want, basically. But but it's we invite people. So if you see like a big dog knocking over, you know, an old person or tipping a wheelchair over, why don't you snap a picture and we'll post it, and maybe we can guilt people into compliance. And maybe the Greenway would think of doing so. Well. Like, no, no one but me is posting at this point. I would ask, <laughs> <laughs> I'd ask folks like Matt who have cameras or but, anyone else. Who but but it's a great idea. We should, we should actually start a site called badnorthendneighbors.org and you know, put the, the drunkards and the dog owners and everybody else. Beer and and because I think it's really important for you to hear these uh, concerns raised and some good comments as well uh, because you are not only a great board member given your experience especially and your involvement with FOCCP but also you are our voice on the board of directors and I want to emphasize that to everybody in the room we now have the point
powers on the board of directors of the Greenway Conservancy because of the recent legislation. And Robin is our current voice on the board. Uh, you, uh, thank you for mentioning the board's public meeting in July. The board does hold other meetings, is my understanding. And they are open, apparently, yeah. but there's less opportunity for public comment at those meetings than there are at the than there is at the um, quarterly meetings right. that are called public meetings of the board of directors. But thank you for giving us a heads up about the July meeting. But please get the conservancy to announce these meetings and including the agendas of these meetings in advance. I don't even have to say well in advance, just in advance. The announcement for the last public meeting of the board came very, very late. I think the agenda came out on the day before or the day of, something like that. And I forwarded it to people in the neighborhood, and quite a few were upset that they were getting that information so late. The, also, the uh, so-called public workshop, which was the North End Waterfront's public workshop focusing on the parks in our area, was not well advertised and house. And because of that, there were actually very few residents at that meeting. And I think I actually counted just as many or more board members and conservancy staff than there were residents. There were two There were two board members. There was uh, myself and John Craigman. And how many staff were there? There were six staff members. Well, there were more residents, but there weren't a lot of people at that meeting because people didn't know about the meeting. So please get Conservancy staff to announce these meetings well in advance so that we can attend. And I, will, I will say though, um, you got the agenda the same time the board members got the agenda. So. Oh yeah, I know. Okay. I mean, I so that they're, they're you <laughs> guys. <laughs> well, no, the same no, it's not. Um, and I hear that you paid well enough that they should be able to do that. Also, another concern that I have is that the and this is mainly because of my, based on my involvement with FOTNET, Friends of the North End Parks, that when a group like that wants to do something on the Greenway, we are given all these requirements. We have to present a plan to the conservancy staff and present a plan to the board of directors for approval, and we also have to, but before that, we have to go to the community and get community support. And the reason for that they've given is that the communities along the Greenway decided, or maybe it's the public, general public, <coughs> decided many years ago what the Greenway should be. And that any changes to that need to go to the public, need to go to the communities along the Greenway. Fine. But the, the uh, group that does not honor that is the Greenway Conservancy itself. It makes decisions on anything at any time without coming to the community. We always learn about these things after the fact. Um, and we've and, and you know that FOTNET has had a great deal of a, a great deal of difficulty in getting the Greenway to be willing to work with us to create beautiful gardens in those parts. Because we believe those gardens are not beautiful. I would like to see the conservancy come into this community, announce it well in advance, and talk about how those two parcels, where the pergolas are, can be much better than they are today. I know that was the purpose of that workshop, but I don't think it ended up that way, partly because the residents just weren't there. But we need to have that conversation. We also need to know that the Conservancy is investing money in our North End parks along the Greenway, uh, just as much as they're investing in uh, enormous amounts of money in other areas of, of the Greenway. I'd like to know how much they're investing in our parks compared to other areas of the Greenway. My last comment is more detailed than that is you stated that changes could not be made to the pergolas in order to create shade. And I'm not sure. Well, I'm not sure what you meant by that, because we were told by the conservancy that the architectural integrity of that stretch with the pergola and the fountain should be should be preserved. 
And I don't know how that's preserved by adding 11 huge umbrellas. <laughs> and I would think that there is a way, if you're willing to spend the kind of money in our parks, I should say, I'm sorry, although you are on the board, uh, if, if the conservancy is willing to spend the entire money in our parks that they spend, like crazy in other areas of the Greenway, could, couldn't they retrofit the pergolas with uh, what I know would be very, very expensive shades that would roll up, but that could come down and get that because the sun comes in in May, though I know that, not just over there. Right. But could, it could be done if they were willing to spend the kind of money in our parks that they're willing to spend in, uh, in other areas. $15,000 is a drop in the bucket compared to what they're spending in other areas. I, I have not seen breakdowns of uh, money spent per parcel, um, but I can ask the, the, um, the finance committee if they can do that. Um, I've only seen figures for the entire thing. Um, and there was an architect uh, at that community workshop describing, as you said, the angle of the sun and how much uh, coverage it would take to um, provide shade, especially in the late afternoon, um, and would that be a, a, a safety issue to have large pieces of either fabric or other material to, to block the, the sun? Although late afternoon is not really the issue. It's more during the day when those benches speed up like stoves. Yes. Uh, the, in, in fact, in the, the late afternoon, moving into early evening, you want as much sun, you want as much light as possible. And we actually have a problem in, parcel, uh, in the parcel at Salem Street that we get quite a bit of shade there because of the existing government set of garage. When they take down that end of the garage and replace it with much, much taller buildings, it's probably going to happen over the next five or six years, we're going to have a lot more shade, especially at the time of day, in the late afternoon and early evening, when you want to hold on to the sun. Thank you. Is there, has there, there's been nobody to replace Brennan appointed yet? Not yet, no. Gee, think all the money you're saving now. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, are you just going to tell us who the director is, or is there a process? Um, I, I have not been told either. Um, there, I, I am not aware of any nominations or of the process yet. Um, that is a question that, that other board members have, and I'm sure um, will get answered for us at the next board meeting, um, because it has been asked. Mm -hmm. But I am not aware of the... The next. Maybe, maybe the interim director may be um, auditioning for the permanent job. Is that possible? I don't know. I don't know. I don't know. I don't know. You need a new job. You want to follow up on the very quick question? You're saying uh, other board members have questions. Who are you asking? Who's not here? If you have a board, who are you asking? I work very closely with John Fredman, who's the new representative. Um, and he and I speak. Um, and we, quite often, be, because we want to make sure that we are hearing the concerns of the neighborhood uh, to report. Oh, no, I'm, I'm thankful that, but I'm talking about the executive director, I don't know who it is, the process. Is it, and is it, if you're on the board, you're on the board, is it coming from the leadership of the board that's not answering your questions? Mm -hmm. right. Yes. So yeah, it's that, not the other board members who are answering me, it is the, the executive director, the staff of the board. That is isn't there a de facto leader, though, on the guy who was the quote-unquote chief operating officer? Yes, he's the interim. He's the interim. Mm -hmm. so, mm -hmm. There's no expectation that he's just going to be named or go find out. That's we will find out. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, Bob again. When we designed parcel 10, parcel 8, the purpose, they were supposed to plant vines on the outside on cross Street. So would cover. Now it's now three or four years and the vines probably would have been up there and we wouldn't have this issue. But they never did it. Isn't that what Fergo is designed for? Is the vine yes. yes. The metal Actually, is too it, hot. No, uh, that's yeah, a lot. Exactly. The, the metal was too hot. No, that's um, not true. Oh, really? Yeah. Oh, I thought it was the I, um, issue. I went to the, all the design meetings for that pergola. The original plant to grow up the pergola was climbing roses. Um, 
some reason during the construction phase they changed the climbing roses to clematis, right. which dies back to the ground every year and starts from scratch. It's a very fast growing vine, but it's not going to go over the top. Um, the, the structure itself isn't really built for that as well. There's not enough support for vines to grow up and over. Um, I actually did some gorilla gardening and planted a climbing rose on one of the pergola um, pieces and the conservancy ripped it out. It was actually, it was actually growing very nicely. Um, um, but yeah, no, they, I think climbing roses would work, but it was never tried. And, um, and the whole too hot thing, it's just a myth. It's not true. It's um, One of the things the conservancy is very concerned about is the pergola needing to be repainted sometime in the next 50 years or whatever. And they don't want anything growing on there in case they have to paint it sometimes. It's not true. Um, in terms of shade, I have a really wonderful idea to add um, vinyl canopies over the top to help shade during the mid-afternoon when it's coming straight down, when it's the hottest. I know during the late afternoon the, the sun comes in and it doesn't provide as much shade. Um, the umbrellas will help, but they will look ridiculous under the structure that's doing nothing. That's right. Um, <laughs> so it's just this weird dynamic that's happened. Um, I'm still hopefully going to be able to work with the Conservancy about doing um, canopies over the top. I have a, a, an idea. I'll present it to the neighborhood once once it's you know going along. I'm going to work on the cross street fence first and then move on to the pergola. Um, the, the idea I have for the pergola is going to cost roughly around $30,000 I think. Something between fifteen and $30,000. So it's a lot of money. And, um, but it, it, I'm thinking of integrating lights into it, uh, Christmas lights and other things um, that make it's going to make it wonderful. Hopefully they'll go for it and we can get some money for it. No disco balls? No disco balls. Just on the disco balls, I told one of the, at the world planning session, I told one of the conservancy engineering folks that you know the disco balls had an unfortunate connotation in the Italian neighborhood with the Saturday Night Fever thing. A lot of, I've seen a lot of tourists say, oh yeah, Disco, Saturday Night Fever, Italians, I get it. And, you know, and I had no clue, and I just thought that was my fault. You know. <laughs> so I, 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 I wanted, if, if I could make one comment, I mean, David brought up some interesting points about like where the money is spent, and I think that would be really great to, yes. to learn about the distribution. I, you know, I think David has a theory that there's a lot of money being spent in the South and nothing in the North. I have a theory that not a lot of money is being spent, period. Um, and I, it would just be nice to know which which theory is, is going. And, and on the notion of spending a lot um, of money, um, the, the, the friends groups like yours have, have an incredible influence uh, if you can basically propose, like, we want to do this, and we're totally fully funded to do it, so please get out of our way, which is sort of, I mean, the, the, the relationship between the Friends of Christopher Columbus Park and the Boston Parks Department, we don't have to deal with a state entity, but the is, is very positive, very good, and part of the reason why is because Tony Pollock knows that when we say we'd like to redo this corner of the park, we're going to go find the funding, we're going to get corporate sponsors, we're going to do all this stuff, and she doesn't have to pay anything for it. Because she doesn't have any money to, to spend, really. I mean, I think she has $15 million for all the parks in the city annually. So if, uh, you know, if if you could create the apparatus to do some fundraising, get that 30 to plus thousand dollars funded, and just say, you know, we'd like to do this, and we don't want you to pay for it, that's fine. You just get a lot more power. I mean, that's how we did the trellis lighting, uh, as, as many of you know, in, in Christopher Columbus Park. I mean, if we'd waited for the Parks Department to do that, you know, it would be 2100 before we, those would be installed. So, nothing against Tony Ball and wonderful Parks Department. Let's face it, the Greenway is one gigantic boondoggle. All I can think of here is the 1,700-acre Burns Park in North Little Rock, Arkansas. Two 18-hole golf courses, 100 miles of riding trails, ball parks, tennis courts, whatever you want along the Mississippi River. 1,700 acres run by the city, and the total administrative budget for running this is $500,000. <laughs> and here we have 13 acres with a budget of how many millions? <laughs> 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 
13 acres and there's some people. Why isn't anybody ever looking at these things, making some comparisons? It's too depressing. Uh, don't get me started. <laughs> I just want to say something about it. Um, God, I mentioned the Reverend John Craigman, who's also a neighborhood appointee, but there are other people on the board who reside in our neighborhood, the county of Waterfront. Do they not? Yes. At least two that I know. At least two, yes. So could you guys maybe form some kind of a coalition <coughs> where you can push, you know, work in this park or our, our preferences if you have four votes out of how many other? 20, 21 or two? Yes. Um, I mean, I don't know if they, they live in the neighborhood, so I assume they um, um, use the parks and. Um, yeah, um, I, again, this, I've only been to two meetings, so I've only met most of the board um, twice, um, and in in that situation, so I haven't had a lot of opportunity to perform those bonds. But um, well, I know okay. you're quite familiar with those people. Yes. So, um, uh, but we, I will definitely continue. And anything about committees? How many committees they have? I, I did ask that question at, at the last meeting, and I did not, um, I have not received an answer yet. But, uh, but just quickly, Jim's question was um, about the Waterfront Park and the Waterfront Park Board. Um, I think that's something that we can talk about in the next meeting. Okay. Thank you. Yes, Jim. Um, I'm Jennifer Lee. I'm the Chair of the Board of Trustees of the Waterfront Park Board. Okay. Um, and I'm Anybody have any other questions? All right, well, thank you for coming. Thank you.